Christmas to both of you. So thank you very much. Now the weekend, this weekend in the city centre, uh, you're going to have all kinds going on. Circus skills, Cantonese Kung Fu, hoop dancing, there's a harmonic gospel choir, live music, there's yoga. And that's just the start of the programme for the Liverpool Loves Festival. Uh, it's great this, you know. Well, Josh Boyd is the managing director of Orb Events who are behind the festival. And uh, he's popped in to tell us all about it. We started in 2015 to really celebrate everything we love about Liverpool, you know, the clues in the title. We're from Liverpool, we love our city, and really, you know, the festival's all about showcasing the amazing things that make us so unique and different. Um, it's full of character, personality, it's got a real scousiness to it, and, you know, it's, it's essentially a platform for local organisations, emerging artists, um, community organisations, charities, social enterprises, anyone and everyone in the city who's doing brilliant things to come on board and really, you know, showcase what they do on the, on the day. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an occasion really for people to come together and, and, and really, you know, celebrate what they love about our city. Just to say, this is what we're about. Come and enjoy it. That's it. Now, you've been down at the Pier Ed in past years, but you've got a, a change in location this time round, haven't you? We have. We're going city central. We're on tour. Um, and, you know, I think the, the fact that we're moving the site this year gives us a chance to explore some different things that we haven't maybe done before. Yeah. But the, the identity of the event will be very much, you know, similar to what we've done in previous years. We've had some brilliant, um, you know, feedback. It's had amazing support. 27,000 people in year one, 40,000 people in year two. And when you look at that on the period, it's amazing because, you know, it's, it's our most iconic location, isn't it, really? Absolutely. So where will it be exactly this time? This year, it's going to be between uh, Shabazz Park and Liverpool One and in Derby Square, where the courts are. Um, so all the main stage and all the food and um, the, the festival bars, my favourite bit, are going to be in the, uh, in the Derby Square section. Um, and then all of our family entertainment, the cultural uh, activities, all the um, have-a-go sessions for kids and, and um, you know, all of the sort of wider activities of, of the festival are going to be taking place in Shabazz Park. Um, so it's nice to have a bit of green for the change as well. <laughs> Get away from that breeze coming in off the bears, you know. You know. Big list of events to go to, but just, just take us through some of them, a few of them that come to mind. I mean, the, the main thing for me is the, the music, really. I'm, I'm a big music fan, and, and our um, stage programmes have, have been kindly put together by The Guide Liverpool, by Liverpool Soul Fest, and also the Rider podcast, um, John Gibbons, who, who does the Anfield rap. So it's Liverpool people programming our main stage. Um, we've got big Liverpool legends like um, Edgar Jones, um, Robert Vincent's playing on the Saturday, Natalie McCurl's playing, Pixie, Delphina King, Sub Blue, so, you know, a real um, wide programme, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, something on offer for everyone there. Um, in terms of the activity that's taking place in, in, in Chibash Park, again, as you were saying at the start of, um, uh, you know, this session, there's so many different things that are all based around ways to wellbeing. So it's how to live a happy and healthy life in, in Liverpool. Everything from circus skills, we've got um, cultural performances like the samba dancing going on, there's a bit of flam flamenco, yoga. there's yoga, there's all kinds. So it's, it, it is really that like festival atmosphere, you know, what we wanted to bring when we, we first started doing this event was something different and fresh and, you know, again, something that is a little bit um, of a, you know, a sense of sounds and sights and, you know, all kinds. So I really think, I think, you know, that, that sort of hippie, happy vibe that we've managed to create over the last two years is definitely on again this year. And I think the good idea about it is as well is to get people involved in things they might not normally get to try, you know. Definitely. You know, it's a, it's all about participation. Um, one of our sort of values as an event is, is for people to participate, again, with it being a, a showcase. But that also runs through to the people who come along and visit on the day. You know, we, it's, it's all well and good going to a festival where there's great music, food and drink and stuff. But, you know, what makes this so different is that anyone and everyone, families, young people, nans and granddads, everyone can come down and, um, you know, find something that's right for them mm -hmm. and see a happy smile on the kids' faces, which is always good as well. And all of, well, most of the performers are local, aren't they? Yeah, um, we've got one or two act two um, a visiting artists. You know, what we're not saying is that um, it's all about just Liverpool people only. Um, it's also about what we love as a city. So, you know, 
um, as we grow the festival in future years, you know, now that we're in the city centre, we're going to, um, in 2018, because it's 10 years since Capital of Culture, it's a big year for the city. Um, you know, we're going to be looking to grow the festival, move into more spaces, and um, with that comes the ability to offer more. So it is about showcasing local artists, emerging talent, but also about in the future inviting people in and really, you know, giving everyone a flavour of what we like in this city. Well, I'm just embracing their talent as well. Definitely. You know, you're not all completely free as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's free to attend. It's a not for profit festival. Um, so we are a not-for-profit organisation um, that, that basically operates this festival. Uh, we've been going for over 10 years, but we, we basically created a, a, a social enterprise to deliver on Liverpool Loves. Because it was important for us that by creating a festival that's all about the city, that it actually has a benefit and an, in, and an impact on the city. So, you know, we showcased over 200 independent businesses every year, as well as all the, the people that benefit, like the artists and the community groups and, and everything else. We wanted to make a commitment to putting the money that was generated through the through the festival, i.e., you know, all the services like putting the stage in, the sound and the lighting, the generators, everything that it takes to put on a festival is spent with local companies. So that you know, we ensure that well over the last two years it's been one hundred and fifty thousand pounds worth of contracts. It's been spent with local business, mm. secures local jobs, and all the rest of it. So it's not just an event that's for us and by us. Um, but it's an also uh, it's also an event that that actually has an impact. Obviously, tourism is massive for the city, isn't it? You know, oh, it is, yeah. um, still growing, and you know we're we're a part of that ecosystem, really. So the weather, what's the forecast? We've got a weather witch in the office, so uh, <laughs> Debbie's been doing a sun dance all week. Um, over the last two years, we've enjoyed amazing weather, and I'm not expecting it to change this weekend either. It being a free event, obviously we want people to get behind it, to support it, to come along on the day, show us that you love your city, and we're going to be there all weekend. Hey, don't forget to come along and support it, you know, the Liverpool Loves Festival, something for everyone. So David Liscard, you wanted a song for your wife Mary, celebrate your 42nd wedding anniversary, and also Sean, can you give me and my grandson Jacob a mention in the happy hour, it's Jacob Nanny Day today. Usually that's on a Saturday, but while he's off school, there's a few extra ones thrown in. And this weekend we're going to be mostly having family time. Thank you, Sean. I love the show from Karen and Speak. Well, here's a nice song for you people. Cindy and Brombra wanted this one, as did PJ and Birkenhead. It's wet, wet, wet. Sweet little mystery. Still got the cheese board to come, you know. Three little snippets of songs you've asked for today which went straight on the cheese boards. Patty has got you a slither of each one and no crackers in sight. That's still to come. You're with Sean Styles on BBC Radio Merseyside. Your station may dub your with me today.
the Pilkington Choir this weekend. The wedding's in St. Joseph's in Kirby, but before that, I'm going to be cleaning out the car. Busy weekend, hope you have a nice one, Sean, and a lovely Hattie as well. Good luck with it, I know you'll always do well with the choir. Great, great sound. And the wedding in St. Joseph's in Kirby. All the best to you, Jim. Mystery on BBC Radio Merseyside. Roger, follow us at 12 noon. Don't forget, get your call in shortly on 0151 709 9333. Travel, BBC Radio Merseyside. There's Hattie. Thanks very much, Sean. M6 southbound, we've got slow traffic around 19 for Nutsford. It's at the beginning of those smart motorway works, so it's starting to slow things down. Got patchy congestion along a, a, a bit of the M6 southbound, actually. It's also looking very slow around 20 for the limb interchange. Uh, extra congestion at backing up to 21 for Walson. Apparently, it's because of extra traffic in the summer holidays, the people heading off on their jollies. Um, so M6 southbound, watch out for that patchy condition for quite a bit of it. The bars in Chester, just a reminder, that's partially blocked and we've got slow traffic because of an earlier accident that happened at Fourgate Street, just on the bars roundabout. Commercial road in Liverpool, a reminder, that's partially blocked in both directions because of a burst water main at the junction with Vauxhall Road. Apparently traffic coping okay with this one. The usual delays along Edge Lane Drive going through those long-term roadworks at St Oswald Street and Rathbone Road and the Strand still looking slow around Water Street congestion backing up to Leed Street. 0151 794 09 Key your updates coming in but that's it from me. Join me, Paul Salt, for Drive Time, weekday afternoons from 4 o'clock. I just mentioned that Donald Trump's White House Communications Director, who of course has been fired, Anthony Scaramucci. Every time I hear his name, I want to break into Bohemian Rhapsody. And Carlos, who's working on the show, this has made you think of doing a, an iPhone experiment, is that right? What, what's yes. happened? If you're talking to Siri, I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the Fandango? Hey! Haunted lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, 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 Galileo Figaro Magnifico. I'm just a poor assistant. Nobody loves me. He's a girl. All right, leave it now. That's Drive Time with me, Paul Salt, on BBC Radio Merseyside. Sean Styles, BBC Radio Merseyside. Roger's here, Hattie's here. Guess the definition. Macrismatic. M A C R A. M O C R O. What's that? Guess the definition, you big. I need to know. Macrosmatic. M A C R O S M A T I C. Ah. Macrosmatic. Macros. I like charismatic, but with macro on the front. Good shout. Is it to have a super sensitive sense of smell? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it high spirited or proud? My word, she's macromatic, that girl. <laughs> or is it vigorously? To do something vigorously is to do it macromatic. It's number one. I was going to say positive. one. Oh, right, okay. But no, but then I was thinking charismatic means someone who's very charming. So I'm going to go for number two because macromatic might be describing. So yes, I'm going to go number two. High spirit is a proud. You stay with number one. I'm sticking on one. Not vigorously, Rog. I can't remember what he's Roger doesn't Macros do anything Macros. vigorously, so. Having a super sensitive sense of oh, smell. Yes. Yeah. Sniff aromatic, they call it in the 14th century, but they yeah. turn it to mackerel. Well, in 1890, he renamed it because you're right. <laughs> Macrosmatic <laughs> is having a super sensitive sense of smell. Ridiculous. You're macrosmatic when you're pregnant. Are you? Smell everything. So, where deodorant you to? That's really How dare you? <laughs> dare yeah. That's dreadful. Yeah. I've, I've got a deodorant that will attract me to Hattie. It smells of money. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> right, student loan company. Uh, they're Boom. increasingly dysfunctional. Okay. Getting lots of reports about this. Uh, and we're running a report today, but we wonder whether people here on Merseyside or their children or their grandchildren have been affected by 
Phones not being answered, interest rates going up without anybody telling them, fines for things they shouldn't be fined. All these stories are coming out. Joe, right? Dan's just paid his off. Yeah. Uh, I'm a long way off that. Um, but he he only found out because he rang up just to see what his balance was and that he paid it off. But they were they had to reimburse him money because they had actually over, overpaid. overpaid. Yeah, that happens a lot. And also, apparently when you ring, you can ring one day, how much do I owe? It tells you. Ring the next day, another person answers, gives a different figure. It's, in, it's not functional. No, so we'll, we'll be here to help about that. Um, if you've got any phobias like wa not going into water, things like that. Not with water, but I just spiders. Hate, I'm not going to hate spiders. Yeah. He absolutely hates spiders. Well, there's a woman who's literally terrified of water, and she's overcome it. She's Glaswegian, and she's going to swim all the way around Britain. She's starting in no. John O'Groats, got the left uh, land's end, got the left hand side, up to John O'Groats, up to uh, John O'Groats, down the right hand side, then back. It'll take her about six months, you're going to swim the whole lot. Just do 20 lengths in your local pool. <laughs> that, is, that is one way to get over your phobia there. It certainly well, is. Hats off to her, that's I, I just want people overcome other phobias that we don't know about. You know, like, I, I knew somebody who had terrible phobia of lift, claustrophobic. Oh, yeah. Oh. Or flying. Just, I've yeah. known people who've missed people's weddings and. Because they can't fly. I've got, I'm, you know, someone on my street doesn't go and visit their daughter in Australia because she's just absolutely terrified. Dennis Bearcamp, remember Dennis Bearcamp at Arsenal? I'm afraid I don't know. Wouldn't fly around. Yeah, he was, he was the number, number one. He was fantastic. So how did he get him to overseas things? Well, he, he, if it was Europe, if they got a team, if they got Russia in Europe, he couldn't play. But if they got, you know, they were in Europe. Eh, sorry, further than Europe, he couldn't play. Right. You know, Holland and like that, he'd go over land and get some to drive him. What he could do is you could give him sort of a smelling salts or something. Yeah, well, he wasn't knocking knock macro, macromatic, you see. Yeah, ah, of course. Smell. Hadn't yeah. thought of that. Um, and um, we're going to be talking to the final of our ballet dancers who's done really well from Liverpool because there's a real push now by the Royal Academy of Dance to try to get men to be ballet dancers. Mm. Not enough men. It was seen, less so now. It's very effeminate, uh, but it, it really is. A couple of young local yeah, lads yeah. who you've spoken to on the show have done really How well. How old when you say young? Uh, he was about 12, wasn't yeah, he? And he was uh, Billy Elliot and. Well, one of them danced there for Matthew Ball. Yeah. yeah. He's a really good dancer, great choreographer yeah. for Matthew Ball. Yeah. So uh, we're going to come with that and see if other people have got issues around that. And uh, why council, which is, I think we know it is, but they're going to impose £100 fines for people who feed seagulls. Oh. So if, any, if anybody into wire being fined, and the bike, city bike rental scheme, mm -hmm. I, I, it, 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 it's an interesting plan. I wonder if people read it, why they use it, why they don't use it, any stories about it, is there any sort about anything, 0151 709 9333. Thank you very much, Roger. My pleasure. Great to see you. Now then, Hattie put together the cheese board today, three songs which we couldn't play in, in their entirety because they were that cheesy. So we, she's got little slices of three songs on a cracker in sight. And sadly, Peter Grant with half hour movie stars on it. Sorry, Pete. I tried. Mary Maudsley, one of the Bay City Rollers, Summer Love Sensation. That's in. She said it reminds me of Happy Summer Moons. Uh, many moons ago. And John and St. Helens wanted the long haired lover from Liverpool, which was in on there.
cracker in sight. Uh, can we have Neil Sedaka, please, with Sweet Caroline for John in Mossley Hill? Well, that's taking us out today. Take care of yourself, folks. I'll see you Monday.